So today I'm going to be talking about uh, um, my project focus uh, related to cultivating mutually beneficial partnerships and how uh, doing so creates uh, more co community resilience. So just an overview, um, we'll be uh, very much uh, talking about um, the initial stages of the project, so the problem statement and question, but also um, digging into the specific, I guess, sample that I'm using or focused partnership. Uh, um, I'll provide an overview of data and, and proposed methods that I'm going to use. I do have some uh, very minimal initial findings, um, deliverables, acknowledgements, and then I, I would like to spend a, a fair amount of time uh, talking through just your perspective on this project and um, questions that you may have. Uh, very much value this group of um, uh, of leaders and uh, scholars and uh, want to hear your take on on my project. So with that, uh, the problem statement. Um, so this is uh, that complex social economic, economic issues in the community like poverty, homelessness, or even a global pandemic uh, cannot be addressed by just one organization, entity, sector, or even at one level. Collaborations between institutions of higher education and nonprofits specifically can leverage diverse strengths, assets, and capacities to create resilient systems for support in the community. And so from that, um, a question that bubbled up to the surface for me was, are university and nonprofit partners, partnerships uh, beneficial in creating community resilience? And I'm going to start with um, what I have, which is access to a partnership through Arizona State University and St. Vincent de Paul. Um, this partnership was officially formalized uh, three years ago, um, and the partnership continues to grow and develop connected activities in the area of service, experiential learning, community-informed research, student retention, knowledge exchange, donations, uh, philanthropy, um, and list, the list goes on. Um, but this, this partnership has very much been rooted in um, a long history of engagement uh, that started back in the late 80s with an amazing professor, Dr. Philip Mizzi um, from WP Carey. Uh, he is, is and was an economics professor um, that moved here from uh, the uh, East Coast and became immediately engaged uh, with St. Vincent de Paul and really set off uh, the partnership and the trajectory. Um, he, uh, his work really set the foundation for um, increased student engagement and opportunity in developing leaders that are um, uh, community embedded, um, but also research that is also focused on uh, the community good. Um, so before I go in here, I'm gonna do my low tech exchange to a video that I feel like um, really uh, kind of provides more insight into the partnership. Um, so I hope this works. I think we're not getting the sound, Erica. Oh. Patricia, you said you can't see it? I can see it, but I can't hear if there's some sound to it. Have, is anybody else having that problem? Yeah, when you share, um, there's a little button in the bottom left corner of the share window that should say share computer audio as well. Okay, I will, let me take a look at that. Got it. Thanks, Thaddeus. Okay, I'm going to reverse this. Got it. Just real that quick was check. It. Okay. That was <laughs> <Good>. it. <laughs> Thank you. 
Uh, we look for partners to be scalable, uh, that is, they're able to uh, take on the scale of a problem. In St. Vincent de Paul, we see all of those things as a part of the way that that institution has evolved and it's matched with our value system, our idea about scale, our idea about uh, community engagement, community service. St. Vincent de Paul works to feed, clothe, house, and heal people in need in our community. We foster community resilience by bringing together those who can give and those who have a need in the most personal, face-to-face -face way as possible. The partnership with ASU allows us to take the strengths of the university in research, expertise, and innovation and integrate them into our work in ways that directly impact our programs and the people we serve. We travel the world looking for sustainability solutions and hotspots, and we just realized what an impact people getting on board in a local way can have. There really aren't any solutions without individuals each choosing to make an impact. And so every person involved in this process has been part of the garden and part of the urban farm. The partnership requires the contributions of what we call time, talent, and treasure, all three. People's time, their talent, their energy, their ideas. We see this more as a, a larger family towards the shared mission and shared vision that involves some of the opportunities that address not only the research needs, the community needs, but us as individuals, um, our relationship. And really those are the types of partnerships I look for now is how can we work with good people doing great things to make an impact. We are helping to build the next generation of leaders and community champions, students who will come to understand the complexities of the challenges we face in our community and will be inspired by the volunteers and staff who have dedicated their lives to caring for people in need. By working together, we're able to learn and grow in ways that we couldn't do alone. The St. Vincent de Paul ASU Partnership can help to power transformational social change by engaging all of us as co-collaborators in building the community that we all want to be part of. That's the hallmark of a powerful partnership. We look forward to working with ASU to make that community a reality for all of us. We are the society of we're all in this together. So I'm just gonna switch over. So you may have heard um, through, through that video and, and a representation of the partnership, a lot of um, sort of anecdotal ways in which the partnership works and important components um, that are visible here. Um, and these are things that I expect to find um, in doing this research and looking at the data that is representative of this particular partnership. So the data itself um, is a, a compiled data data set. It's a partnership inventory. Um, it includes volunteer data both from Arizona State University, i.e. the Changemaker Central, um, and St. Vincent de Paul, but also represents data um, such as donations, drives, monetary giving, both from St. Vincent de Paul, but also data that's been collected um, from the Social Embeddedness Survey. Um, historical accounts of the partnership uh, through different uh, publications on both sides of the partnership, um, community informed research primarily from nursing and health innovation, and then WP Carey School of Business, and then qualitative data um, that was initially taken uh, in the form of stakeholder interviews back in 2017. Um, I am planning on uh, augmenting this data as well, and right now I have data from 2014 um, or consistent data from 2014 up through uh, 2020. So this is um, the initial and very rough draft of a social network analysis that I did initially in starting with this partnership. Um, this really just captures kind of um, where the partnership was initially. Um, so it represents 11 colleges, five research projects, 18 days of service, 22 internship programs, and about 1,000 students um, engaged. Uh, 
in my initial analysis of the, the, the current data, um, those stats have changed quite a bit. So it went from 61, uh, what I'm calling touch points, um, with St. Vincent de Paul and ASU, and a touch point can be a student doing service, a group doing service, a faculty member doing research, uh, someone at St. Vincent de Paul doing, uh, sitting on a panel at ASU, um, any sort of exchange. Uh, went from 61 uh, to uh, 608. Uh, so right now my data set um, is just over 600 and represents um, kind of that, that breadth um, of the partnership. So there's a lot of um, internships and service learning opportunities with students as you would expect to see. Um, Self-directed service. So this is a service that faculty, staff, um, and students do without uh, identifying themselves as as such as a member of ASU in some form or fashion and then group service um, also what I'm finding is and th these definitely fluctuate uh, I'm hoping to get a better understanding of whether or not there are trends in this fluctuation but the Watts College um, has the the highest amount of um, uh, touch points influence uh, partnership with St. Vincent de Paul, followed closely by um, EOS at ASU, which is the uh, Education Outreach Student Services Department. So for those of you that may not be as familiar with that unit, uh, it's the unit that um, uh, is run by the Dean of Students Office and encompasses career services, um, counseling, tutoring, et cetera. And then right now, College of Liberal Arts. So my uh, method and process, uh, much like um, what Josh mentioned, um, I'm really focusing on um, using grounded theory research as an approach uh, to data exploration. Um, I want to find out what those trends are within the research, or within the data, but also what may, where there may be gaps. Um, I'm hoping to identify um, once doing that deeper analysis. Um, variables um, that could possibly help me figure out relationships between uh, different aspects of partnership and maybe even the quality of connections. Uh, I will also, uh, once I have that, um, go through that um, analysis, I'm planning on uh, conducting focus groups with stakeholders to share statistics and findings and also um, uh, receive feedback um, from them. So deliverables, um, this, this is an area that I'm kind of struggling with right now. Uh, I think there, are, there could be many deliverables. I, I think one of the most important ones is that I'm hoping that by going through this, this exploration of the data and partnership, there will be um, more insight into how to measure these types of partnerships. So whether that is um, through finding like a specific set of characteristics um, that help could could help others measure a partnership like this, um, or could help others create partnerships like this. Um, and I am planning on uh, sharing my findings again with those with the stakeholders, but also um, uh, attempting <laughs> an academic article, uh, which I have not done before, um, but also. Uh, uh, sharing findings over a blog uh, with the ASU Lodestar Center for Philanthropy and Nonprofit Innovation. And the so what? Um, so these partnerships are absolutely essential. And, and I'll go further and say that not just nonprofit and institutions of higher ed, but also um, partnerships between nonprofits, partnerships between government entities. And I'm hoping that um, this research does help inform and better inform um, how, to, how to measure and think through partnerships. Um, because that is currently a gap uh, in, in, our, uh, in the research right now, um, is around how do you really measure these dynamic partnerships. So with that, um, just a couple of acknowledgements and would like to go into uh, questions. Perfect timing. Thank you. Sounds like uh, Nikita has a question. Let's throw it over to you first. Oh my goodness. I should have known I was going first. I was trying to sneak and have an early lunch. <laughs> I can teach you 
Um, one, I love it. Thank Two, you. Um, so I, I think this is vital um, for several reasons. One, a lot of times when, when um, institutions like ASU or other institutions are trying to do good in the air quotes community, mm -hmm. they're so far removed, it's difficult to, and we talked about this, like um, ascertain what the community actually needs and making sure that it's community led. Yeah. And then two, the other side of that coin is um, for nonprofits, it's beneficial to partner with institutions um, to try to gain more financial backing to be able to make a, 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 a broader reach. And then my third point, you can tell I'm probably excited, <laughs> so I'm not trying to <laughs> mind, sorry, is what I've noticed with these partnerships is that uh, large institutions like ASU also like to partner with larger nonprofits like Valley of the Sun mm -hmm. and St. Vincent de Paul, and they're smaller Nonprofits mm -hmm. who are doing very pivotal work, um, mm -hmm. vital work in the community. And so how do we ensure that those nonprofits are not overlooked? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Nikita, that was like wonderful because something I forgot to, to, to mention was that um, I'm already starting to work with, um, a, albeit a, a large nonprofit, um, internationally, but not domestically. So the IRC and the Welcome Center um, in downtown Phoenix is, um, they have they have pivoted, of course, um, to, to support asylum seekers, but this model for them is very new. They do not, um, sorry, <laughs> dog noises. Um, they do not, uh, uh, they do not have a structure in place to support um, what they're doing and so in partnership with them uh, we're trying to figure out how to bring a lot of the successes from the St. Vincent de Paul partnership into that environment so I really I really appreciate that you highlighted that because I think it's it's something that I've seen in my work as well um, that institutions often will will partner with larger entities in the community because they 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 already see scale um, that that you, that all of their work um, can be um, scaled at a certain rate. And so I think that's a really important point. I appreciate it. Of course, and great job, by the way. Thanks. Um, Joshua has a question, uh, comment. Yeah, just uh, real quick, uh, Erica, I, thought, I think this is a really great project. And um, with, with my other hats, um, I think it would be uh, really, if there's anything that I can do to help in this collaboration, um, feel free to reach out and we can chat more about that. But um, I, I don't know that I saw this, but um, Social Embeddedness has the ASU Collaboratory, which is a database mm, of mm -hmm. social engagement, uh, community engagement work that ASU does. So that might be a nice data source for you. That's a great point, thank you. I, yeah. I know of, but didn't I didn't quite know that they had a, um, a data set. So I'll reach out to those folks. Well, and to add on to that, Erica, we at the Knowledge Exchange for Resilience, we helped them transfer the old system to the new collaboratory system. So we also have that data set. And Christina Ngo, who is the, um, the new person dealing with that, mm -hmm. um, she's one of our cross-cutting scholars as well. So we can really make a good point for having you um, um, look at that stuff. And, and Mason, who I know you've talked to and everyone has met, mm -hmm. he's doing some social network analysis on that data set. So oh, um, I think we, just to put that on your radar, I think that there's some interesting things. Now your work, your data is somewhat different, but mm -hmm. um, I think also, yeah, very, very relevant. Um, let's see, Katie, I think has some um, suggestions on boundary organization literature. Mm. Oh, I just, I was just going to say that might be an interesting literature for you. I, I'm pretty new to it, but I've been doing a, working on a paper with Margaret Hendricks, who works in the decision theater, and they've been working on developing this concept of boundary organizations that are like sort of temporarily shifting organizations that span um, different entities like academic and policy or nonprofit and policy and academic. Um, that might be useful. 
Yeah, it. I mean, it definitely sounds like it. You said it's, um, is it a publication? There are a couple, there's like, it's kind of like a stream of literature. I can send you some okay. citations. Yeah, that'd be great. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. I'll do that right now. Thank you.